Thank you very much, Joe. Thank you all for uh, for having me here. It's a great uh, honor to uh, be in Egypt, to be in uh, Alexandria, and to represent here uh, the SPIN. Um, I'm a dermatologist, as uh, Joe said, in uh, in Amsterdam, and I'm uh, running a specific uh, specialized psoriasis and atopic eczema clinic. We have, uh, besides the topical treatments, also in daycare, in our daycare center, we have uh, availability of many of the conventional uh, systemics of the UV therapies and uh, many biologics, and we are performing a lot of research on these topics. Um, one of the main interests is metotrexate throughout the years that I'm doing research and um, well, studying all the literature, I think we, we should move on and see whether we can uh, improve the treatment with metotrexate for psoriasis and in the future for uh, part of the patients with atopic dermatitis as well. I um, do participate in clinical trials, but all the payments go to my department. Well, maybe it's good to know that the FDA approval for metotrexate was in 1972, and it was already in use in dermatology for psoriasis since the late 50s. So because metotrexate was introduced before the acceptance of standard randomized control trials that we have now as high level of evidence, there is a high variety in how we use metotrexate. And there's a high variety in doses regimens, and I think we, sh we, uh, we will be able to improve that. So what we did is we summarized the evidence from randomized controlled trials and aggravated evidence. And aggravated evidence are the guidelines and systematic reviews and consensus conferences. So we looked at the evidence-based recommendations regarding several aspects of metotrexate dosing. We looked at the test dose, the star dose, dosing schemes, dose adjustments, maximum dose, and the use of folic acid. So we did a literature search for all these randomized control trials and aggregated evidence, and we selected randomized control trials, including reporting on efficacy, more than 10 patients, and um, enough information about MTH dosing. And we try to start with uh, making recommendations, which I come back to that later. So in this systematic review, we included 23 studies, four comparing major trexate different dosing regimens, and 19 studies comparing major trexate to another active substance, and 10 guidelines and systematic reviews. This is a list of all the randomized control trials. I'm not going into detail. It just summarized how many patients were involved in these randomized control trials, what was mentioned about the dosing of metotrexate, uh, how many weeks were patients treated, and at what time point were the results, the efficacy and safety data mentioned. These are the, the, the aggregated evidence, the guidelines, and uh, consensus papers and systematic reviews. And again, all the specific data that we wanted were summarized in this table. The problem with the randomized controlled trials is that there are a lot of data available, but there, he, there is heterogeneity in how we report the outcomes. Um, the best way would be to, to uniform the outcome parameters and to compare different dosing regimens for metotrexate to come up with real good recommendations, but we are far ahead of that. So the basis of my recommendations will be of the randomized control trials that have compared the different dosing regimens. So for example, the test dose, and I'm not familiar with how you uh, use test dose in, uh, in Egypt and, and all the other aspects about dosing of metotrexate, but we think based on what we have now, that test dosing in psoriasis is not necessary anymore. Perhaps you could only do that in frail patients where you are afraid maybe of pancytopenia, but in general, I think we could skip test dosing for metotrexate. Although I would mention, if you start with just right off a, a good starting dose, you might want to monitor laboratory tests, blood tests, within 10 days or within two weeks to see whether there's, there's a problem. Well, the starting dose, that's also something that is very heterogeneity throughout the literature. In RCTs, differences between five milligram per week and 25 milligram per week are used, and also in the summarized evidence, 
there's a lot of uh, heterogeneity and our recommendation would be in just normal in break, between brackets healthy patients start off with 15 milligram per week I think if we start too low in relatively healthy patients we under treat patients for such a long time and it will take a time till methotrexate uh, is working well enough. In frail patients, read patients with kidney function problems or elderly patients, maybe you initiate with 5 or 7.5 milligram per week and um, in both do initially monitoring. So the dosing regimen, there's also differences, is it twice weekly, single weekly or still the Weinstein scheme? Um, no uniformity based on the randomized control trials and the, uh, the summarized evidence. We would suggest start off with a single weekly dose that's simple and easy to uh, apply for patients. And if there is gastrointestinal problems, maybe adjust your scheme to the Weinstein scheme, for example. So the dose adjustments, there's not much evidence on dose adjustments. This is a randomized control trial looking at different doses and adjusting the dose depending on the PASI improvement. So starting with 7.5, 7 which I think is too low in, in uh, healthy neuropsoriasis patients, um, but it goes up to 25 milligram per week based on the PASI. So in general, we could say start off with 50 milligram per week and at week eight, maybe start to increase when there's not enough improvement. And I think the, uh, the, the treatment goals that are out there, the, the, the treatment goals from Rowitz et al. and now from Dowden, from the Spanish uh, group, um, I think we should use them also when we are treating patients with methotrexate. And um, we, we, should, we should not dose too low. So the maximum dose, there's no conclusion based on randomized controlled trials from the uh, aggregated evidences, all, all, everything between 22 and a half and 30 milligram per week. And we recommend maybe 25 milligram per week because the idea is that if 25 milligram per week is not working, probably 30 will not work either. Folic acid, there's a lot of heterogeneity about the use of folic acid and it could be a separate talk, but we summarize the evidence that is out there. Um, regimens, from folic acid combined with methotrexate range from one to five milligram daily, except of the day that methotrexate is taken, to five milligrams um, only once a week the day after methotrexate, and also um, from the aggregated evidence um, of, of based on the that was based on the aggregated evidence. Our recommendation is to use one to five milligram per day, except on the methotrexate day to five milligram. So there's no real clear recommendation yet, and uh, I'll come back to that later. So these are the recommendations based on this systematic review, and that's just our recommendation from my expert uh, expertise clinic. And we have published these in uh, 2016. I think we need the next step, but first it's good to know how we are treating patients with psoriasis, and there's done a survey by, uh, by the, the Prizes International Network in 2015. Um, nearly 500 dermatologists from um, nearly 70 countries were uh, surveyed, and uh, the conclusion was that the methotrexate dose is not uniform. It really depends on how you are tra uh, trained as a dermatologist, where you are trained, and uh, there's no full agreement. So the next step, after having done the systematic review, and uh, having this survey, I think we should take a step forward and try to get consensus internationally on dosing of methotrexate because I think it will improve the care for our patients and it will reduce undertreatment. So we, uh, we are initiating a project and we are in the, in the, the early stages of that, um, a spin consensus on methotrexate dosing. It will be led my, uh, by my group, but the people that are involved in dosing aspects in the literature from the recent years will be involved as well, such as uh, um, Gimenei, who is leading the survey for PIN. Um, so the whole idea is the background of the systematic review, and we will go to all the different aspects of methotrexate dosing in this survey. 
And hopefully we will get a consensus in a year or so to be able to optimize the treatment. Um, I think methotrexate is still used in many countries, and as I talked today uh, to a few of your uh, of my colleagues here in uh, in Egypt, it's maybe the, the mainstay of treatment for more severe uh, psoriasis, and I think we can uh, improve that. Um, so, aiming for international consensus on MTX dosing, elaborate on reasons for non-consensus if applicable, and detect the gaps of evidence. So, if we need more evidence for a certain recommendation. We need to work on that in future research. It will be an online eDelphi procedure, and if necessary, if we don't get a, enough consensus during these online um, um, consensus uh, procedure, then we will try to um, uh, come together for a consensus meeting. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>